Okay, back to falling bodies. Um, another example. Let's say I asked you, how tall is a building if the ball hits the ground after four seconds? In other words, I go up to the top of a building, I let a ball go, and I time it and fi find that it hits the ground four seconds later. How tall is that building? Well, you're going to be surprised how tall it is. It's, it's really quite tall. It takes, a, it takes a, a, a great distance for something to fall for four seconds. Um, now, there's a easy sort of um, intuitive way of doing this, and you could also use the equation if you want. Okay, but let's do it the intuitive way first. Okay. Uh, we know that the ball starts at a velocity of zero. Okay. How fast is it going after four seconds? Okay, try to answer that. How fast is it going after four seconds? Well, we actually answered it up here. It's going at 40 meters per second, right? Every second it gains 10 meters per second. So after the first second, it's going 10. After the second second, it's going 20. After the third second, it's going 30. After the fourth second, it's going 40. Okay. So what is the average velocity of the ball during that period of time? Well, it starts at zero, it ends at 40, so the average is just, you split the difference. It's 20, it's halfway. So the average velocity is 20 meters per second, okay? So how far did it fall during the four seconds? Now you might just say, oh, 20. No, that's how far it would fall if it were only one second, but it's falling for four seconds, okay? So it's if it's averaging 20 meters per second, that means every second it's traveling an extra 20 meters, that means it goes 20, 40, 60, 80. Okay, so uh, four, uh, 4 times 20 is going to be 80 meters. Okay, so the answer there is going to be 80 meters. Um, if we want to do it using the equation, we can do that. Okay, we can say the distance fallen is 1 half ATT. Now remember, this only works if you're stop starting from rest, when you're just dropping it from rest without throwing the ball upward or throwing it downward. <clears throat> okay, so it's one half times 10 meters per second per second times four seconds times four seconds. Okay, now remember this part, the one half, the one half AT is really the average velocity. So it's 1 half times 10, which is 5, and 5 times 4 is 20. So just like we did in our heads, we said that the average velocity is 20 meters per second. So 20 meters per second over 4 seconds will give you 80 meters. So the building is 80 meters high. Okay? All right. Let's do another example, but this time with somebody throwing a ball high up into the air. Okay? We got a ball thrown upward with a vertical velocity of 30 meters per second. First question is, how long will it stay in the air if you catch it on the way down? Okay. Well, you throw the ball upward at 30 meters per second. So, how fast is it going after the first second? Is it going faster? Is it going slower? Well, it's going to be going slower because gravity is going to slow it down. The net force is downward. The velocity is upward, so it's slowing down. So after one second, it's going to be going upward only at 20 meters per second. After two seconds, how fast is it going upward? Well, after two seconds, it's only going to be going upward at 10 meters per second because it's lost another 10 meters per second of speed. Okay. So how long before it reaches zero? Well, hopefully you answered that it's three seconds because after three seconds, it's lost 10, 20, 30 meters per second of upward speed. So three seconds after I launch it upward, it has got zero velocity, okay? So it goes up for three seconds, and then the downward trip is exactly the same, except like it's like reversing a movie. It comes down for three seconds before it hits your hand, <clears throat> okay? By the way, it will hit your hand with exactly the same velocity as you threw it upward. So it goes up at 30 meters per second, after, after three seconds, it gets to zero, it turns around, it falls down, and gains 10, 20, 
30 meters per second on the way down again as you catch it. Okay, so the ball will lose 10 meters per second of its vertical velocity each second. After three seconds, it will stop and begin to fall. The downward trip takes the same amount of time, so it will stay in the air for a total of six seconds. Okay, so it's like this. This little diagram shows this very nicely. Okay. It goes up for three seconds, reaches the top at zero meters per second, and then comes down. And if you caught it, it would be going downward at 30 meters per second after six seconds. Okay. Since it takes three seconds to fall from the maximum height, okay, so from the tippy top here to here, what is this distance? What is the distance that it falls? Well, this is just like the previous question where we said, how tall is the building? If I drop the ball from this height up top here, and it takes three seconds to fall down to here, what's the average velocity? Well, the average velocity is going to be the difference between zero and 30. It's going to be the zero, it's going to be 15 meters per second downward. So the average velocity is 15 meters per second. And if I multiply that by the number of seconds, one, two, three seconds, 15 meters per second times three is 45 meters. So the height here, the distance, is 45 meters. Okay. The other way you can do it is by using the equation from of falling from here down to here. Okay, D is one half AT squared or one half ATT, depending on which one you want to use. Okay, in this case, I left it as T squared just to show you that there are two ways of doing it. It's really the same thing. <clears throat> so the distance is one half times 10 meters per second squared times three seconds squared. And that's one half times 10 times nine, which gives you 45 meters. Okay, again, you get the same answer just by reasoning it out or by using the equation. I prefer you to reason it out because you're understanding the physics of the matter better if you reason it out. Okay. <clears throat> now, you might wonder, is there a way of doing this, uh, figuring out the displacement, say, of the ball at any time without having to kind of do all this mental gymnastics of 10, 20, uh, 20 10, 0, minus 10, minus 20, and so on? Well, the answer is yes, and it's actually very simple, okay? So basically, if it's initially thrown up or down with a velocity vi, the answer is, if the initial velocity is up, it will fall a distance v initial times t less, okay? In other words, the upward velocity will make its downward distance less by this much. Okay. If the initial velocity is down, in other words, like if I took the ball and I threw it off the edge of the cliff downward, it will fall a distance vi times t more. Okay. So in other words, um, <clears throat> well, let's do the example. So the displacement of the ball basically is the distance that it falls under gravity, okay, plus this extra distance that is caused by the initial velocity. The distance fallen, remember, is one half ATT. This is the this is what we use when we just talk about how much something falls underneath where it would have been if you just dropped it from rest. So the displacement here is actually very simple. It's how far something falls beneath where it would have been if there was no gravity. Okay, so VIT is basic, VI times T is the amount of height either upward or downward that it would have gone if there were no gravity. And then when you turn gravity on, it falls farther underneath that by an amount one half ATT. Okay. Let's do the example on the right. I want to find, for example, what is the distance here below 
where the ball was thrown upward seven seconds after it was thrown up in the air. Okay, I want to know basically how far below the uh, the launch point uh, on the cliff this ball is. Okay, well, I basically take this equation and I plug in a is 10 meters per second per second, t is 7 seconds, and then for v, v initial is 30 meters per second upward. Now what you can do is you can always say that that downward is negative and upward is positive, okay? That's probably the best thing to do. So, um, but here I just use down and up. So basically, if I do this part here, and this part here, I find that the amount that it falls is 245 meters. The amount that it is above that, because of the initial velocity, is 210 meters. And when you split the difference between that, 245 down plus 210 up, what you get is basically 35 meters down. Okay, so what you could do is you could make the downward negative and the upward positive, and then that would make this negative 35 meters, which would mean that it was 35 meters below where the, uh, the ball was launched. Okay, so really what we're saying here is that um, you have, uh, when you have an object that is being launched, uh, under the influence of gravity, it will fall underneath the path that it would have taken if there were no gravity at all. Okay, so for example, if I, uh, if the initial was 30 meters per second upward, that's V initial, if there was no gravity, no gravity, that's supposed to say no gravity, then it would go up 30, plus 30, so this would be this would be zero on the bottom here. This would be plus 60, plus 90, plus 120, okay? But I know that because of gravity, things fall a certain amount in a certain number of seconds. So basically, after the first second, it would be actually five meters below that point. So the ball would be here. Instead of 60 meters after two seconds, it would be 20 meters below that. So that would be right here, okay? And after three seconds, instead of being up by 90 meters, it would be 45 meters below that. So basically, this height would be 20, 25 meters. This height would be 60 minus 20 would be 40 meters. And this height, the height that it got to, would be 90 minus 45, which is 45 meters, which is what we calculated previously for the height that the ball goes, okay? So at zero meters, it starts, and then instead of going 30 meters after the first seconds, it's gone 30 minus five. After two seconds, instead of going up to 60, it's gone 60 minus 20. After three seconds, instead of going 90, it's gone 90 minus 45. And you can continue on if you really wanted to. You could say, okay, instead of 120, after um, after four seconds, it's fallen 80 meters. So it would end up right. I'm sorry, I overdid it here. It would end up here as 120 minus 80, which would be 40 meters again. Okay. At any rate, that's another way to look at it. Okay, so that is basically it for the lecture portion of the falling bodies. Uh, next, we're going to do um, an online uh, video of clicker questions. So make sure to look at that.